Chris and all, welcome to the latest Furious in Devotion podcast. Um, lads, it's it's been a long weekend, isn't it? We've we, we've done some miles. Um, does anyone know how many minutes we have left in the National League? Liam, are you aware of that? Uh, by my last count, I think it was no no more, wasn't it? No more minutes in the National League. Tim, do you yeah. think? No more minutes in the National League. <laughs> No more minutes in the National League. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Okay. Not the gist. I was not prepared for that. In, prepared for that. In, in the absence of not actually sticking it in, I just thought we'd do it now. So there we are. So no more <laughs> minutes in the National League. Um, answers on the postcard to however many minutes we did have in the National League. It was a oh, lot. Do you know what? I did work that out. I worked that out for... Um, let, I'll, I'll, I'll grab that. I've got that stat. Uh, but I only did it from, from Boreham Wood. So I don't know if it technically, I'll just have to, well, whatever that stat is, add a week. And that's how we'll do it. Um, okay. Any idea how that chance started? I heard that Wrexham fans got into the last Chester game in the Football League and started chanting that at, at, at the Diva. Anyone, anyone heard the same? I've certainly seen a YouTube video of that somewhere. And so they've decided to do it again. Fair, fair play. Yeah, great game. Uh, well, great trip, more than great game. I'd say. Uh, me, Liam, and Tim went down. Uh, just Gar- 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 Garant was also there. But yeah, we, we yeah, all four We're going to come to Garant. Garant, oh, you've ruined the intro now. <laughs> well, it's just, it's, it's just like, it's like we were like, oh, uh, just let's get to the elephant in the room. We were all there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, we were all there. Um, before we sort of uh, come to Garant, though, let's just talk about some of the sort of burning issues from that match. Now, one thing I, I, I thought, and one thing that me and my mates were saying before it was, I really hope Luke Young gets a run out because basically, you know, it's his hometown club. Uh, there's a lot of his family down there. Um, he's been, you know, he was instrumental in the first part of the season and he's he's found himself out the side a little bit. Now, what Liam, what do you sort of think about him not being on the bench? Do you think it sort of says something that, that might be happening behind the scenes or do you just think it's he's just a victim of the squad's being strengthened? And you know, sometimes people have to sit out. Yeah, I think you can read you can read a lot into these things, you know, one way or the other. But uh, he looked he looked relatively happy. I saw him outside the ground after the game. He was smiling, chatting away with fans. Didn't look like a man who was necessarily about to to leave Wrexham or anything. I just wonder if maybe Parkinson wanted to give you know Billy Waters some minutes. You make a signing and then. No one gets to see him, so it was, it was actually quite interesting just to see him get a few minutes, see what he's about. Um, so I'm not, I'm trying not to read too much into it. Let's see. Tim, are you reading any, anything into it? No, um, absolutely not. Uh, I, I get what people are saying, but you have to kind of, even though we've won the league, you kind of have to do away with the sentimental aspect of it. Yeah, it would have been lovely for him to play his old team, blah blah this and blah blah that. But I mean. Parky showed that he wanted to to wrap up the season with another win by naming his strongest team in his eyes. So, you know, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I can understand, you know, there was a, a bit of a, not a clamour, but understanding that he could have made wholesale changes to please everybody, but it's not about pleasing anybody at this stage of the season. It's done. You know, the winners, everybody's happy. Some players will leave. We'll come to that in a bit. Um, do I feel sorry for him? A, a little bit, but probably no, no more sorry than most of the players. And you know, the hardest person who's got the toughest job has always been the manager. And Luke Young has been really, really good for us, not just this season, but since he's been here. Um, he's been unfortunate that other players have come in and and have, have have probably set or raised the bar even further. That's that's no slight on him. That's just the, the way a strong squad works. Yeah, I mean, I would have liked Parky to put him on the bench uh, at least, and maybe come on for the last ten minutes. I thought that would have been, I thought it would be nice, uh, you know, just because, just because that's that's one of his old clubs. But you're right, there's no room for sentiment in this. Parky obviously showed that he wants, he wanted to win that match. It wasn't going to be a procession. Um, he owed it to the league, really, to to have his strongest side out. And at the moment, he thinks that Luke Young doesn't make that squad, and that and that's fair enough. Now. Look, we all we all made it to the match. We all did it in sort of different ways. Uh, I came from London. You guys probably drove down from from Wrexham. But 
uh, there was a couple of Canadians who made a hell of an effort. Remember, we were walking back and we met that, that mm-hmm. Canadian family, Mike and Charlene from Toronto. And there was two, two, two ladies there as well. I wasn't, didn't quite catch their name. But can I just uh, give a shout out to those two? Because not only did they have they come across for a Wrexham match, made it all the way to Torquay, but they did some real undercover work because they were in the Torquay end and because they were in a box, Charlene especially, has been watching Torquay games in case someone asked her a question and tried to catch her out. So that is dedication. She was like, she was being quizzed by Mike about, you know, who her favorite goals player is, you know, what, how, you know, how they've been doing recently, a bit of goals trivia as well. So well done, well done, Charlene and Mike. Um, And they seemed, they came to this, to the Devon with us later and they seem to have a good, good, uh, good time. Um, Right. Before we sort of get on to our guest, um, should we just quickly mention the retain list, which I think will probably be be announced this week? I can't see any reason why they, they would delay it, really. Uh, Liam, would you uh, simply, would you offer contracts to anyone who is out of contract? Uh, look, you're assuming that I, I know who's in and out of contract, Andy, and as oh, you well know... That... Well, there's one man on this call who will know that, but we're going to come to Geraint later. <laughs> um, I, think, I think most of the keepers are out of contract, uh, except for Leighton, who's got another year. I think in defence, uh, Reese Hall Johnson is out of contract. I think Maka Linden. Um, Tim, any more? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm going to be pretty honest and go. I'm going to go to our friends over at Rob Ryan Red, who did a <laughs> big thing on contracts. So I'm just don't we say, don't we look like the the, the pod yeah. that does our research? Well, I mean, Nate loves. I mean, loves, we even put yeah. talk about the retain mm-hmm. list on our sort of to do list before this pod, and then no one's managed <laughs> to get. <laughs> we, look, we, we, we can't contract. we can't get every amateur hour. All right, well, listen up. Shut up for a minute. Right, so the only people. That would be out of contract, but who, who's in contract? Rob Lainton, everybody else on the goalkeeper front is yeah. out of contract. So what do you do there? Let's go for that one first. What, what, what's your... I mean, my take, is, it sounds ridiculous, but I'm sticking to my guns, is probably a, a, a new stable of goalkeepers. Uh, yeah. That's not being harsh. That's just, you know, I think there's a need for it. I know, I understand there's this romantic idea of keeping Foster on, and I get that. Um, for me, I just think we need somebody um, a little bit younger and somebody to take us forward over the next couple of years and have that settled position because we haven't, through injury and everything else, it hasn't been a settled position for a while now. So I think that's something that we need going forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think all through this this squad build or rebuild that Parky's done, he's nailed positions. He's got people who can who could, on three or four year contracts who can sit in that position as they go up the league, you know, the likes of Aaron Hayden, the likes of Paul Mullin, the likes of Tom O'Connor. So I don't, you know, I, I think it makes sense that they go in and get a keeper round about, you know, 26, 27. Maybe they look a bit higher towards, towards championship. I don't know. Um, but I, I think it makes sense to come rather than have someone like Foster to come in for, for a year to nail the position now. Uh, Liam, what do you think? Um, if, if Ben Foster were to stay on for another year, I certainly wouldn't be disappointed. I think he's more than capable, well, definitely more than capable of doing a job at League Two level. Um, personally, I, I have to say I would like to see sort of almost a clean slate, get a keeper in place who can can take us through a couple of leagues. It seems to be what we've done with with most other positions. So that would be my preference. But yeah, like like I said, if Ben Foster signs on, I'd be very happy. So. Yeah, yeah, take it either I, way. I agree. I mean, if if you can't get Foster to stay, it's a no-brainer to get him, isn't it? But I'll but... Uh, I'll I'll carry on with the with the uh, the the, uh, the contract stats as unoffic- as unofficially sponsored by Rob Ryan Red. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't see un- that. Un- un- unlike our unlike our official sponsor, which Andy didn't mention, the Fat Boys. I, I was I had a whole segment on that later, so you ruined that too. So <laughs> you ruined are, I'm not saying it to begin ru- with. Ruining segments left, right, and centre. No, no, no. no. You you ruined my match day experience yesterday too with your much. dreadful backside, Andy. So too you know, much it's, all, it's all even. Yeah, <laughs> Gilpin's guffs. That's what we're going to call it. I mean, I, I was out till three a.m. I was I was not a well man. Um, uh, <laughs> You're not a well man. Full stop. It doesn't take much to be out at three a.m. Right, let's, 
let's cut to the right, chase. Come on, go through, go through this. Never mind my backside. Go right. through. So go, going back to, to Nathan and Rich's wonderful um, uh, work, uh, and they do put a lot of work in. So there, um, people out of contract in defence: Harry Lennon, Reese Hall Johnson. Thank you very much for your time. Farewell and good luck. Is that fair to say? <laughs> Uh, if you could keep Lennon fit and if he could ever play more than two games well, but you can't. at the moment, but I meant a week. Um, you can't. He, he came in, he said, well, we'll give him a contract if he proves his fitness. He proved his fitness, got a contract and got injured. Yeah, fine. Okay. I, I mean, I think Lennon's a talented player, but I just I, I just don't think he, we can rely on him. And we've all said that, that on his day, he's probably one of the best defenders at the club. Um, but again, we're now in a fortunate position where we've got reinforcements in that negates the need for him to be here, but he will find himself back at another club, no doubt. So, cool. anyway, right. I'll go through, go through um, midfield. midfield. Mac- I don't too long. McAlinden is the only one out of contract um, in June. Oh, uh, you know what? I'd give him a year just because he can play across. Really? Oh. Because he can play across so many different positions. And he's played yeah. league football, hasn't he? You know, he's a he's got experience yeah. at that level also, as well. So, if you got six or seven on the bench, surely you would you would have someone like McAlinden. I'm worried. I'm worried now because Garen's got his pen out, which terrifies me. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like a blacklist. He's writing ban Tim from, <laughs> from the race course ground. <laughs> damn, damn. Signed. Yeah. Um, okay, so onwards to the final part of the puzzle. Um, up top, the only person um who is out of contract in June is on loan, South End United man Jake Hyde. Again, right. Um, right. again, I think he's, I think he's a, he's a, an all right striker, and you know, if Southend are in a position to take him, I'm sure they would. Um, but yeah, thanks for that goal that didn't stand at Southend. Wonderful. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. I, I, I wouldn't keep Hyde. I think we probably do need another striker, but you know, um, I don't think it would be Jake to be honest. Right. Okay. Look, he's been waiting here long enough. Let's give Geraint the intro that he deserves. <laughs> so we've been waiting to get this fella on for ages because he's the guy who holds everything together. Hardworking, talented with the odd flash of anger. He's the behind-the-scenes Darren Ferguson, orchestrating everything. From editing the programme to ratifying transfers, showing endless Americans around the ground, ordering all those post-match peaches. Pe- peaches? Pizzas, even. <laughs> peaches. <laughs> A peach pizza. Uh, he sorts out everyone's emails, no problems too big or too small for him. He links the club from its glorious past to its exciting future, and he's dealt with a few rogues along the way. He's Mr. Wrexham AFC. He's Geraint Parry. I mean, not meaning to turn this into a loving Geraint, but before we start, can we just say from every Wrexham fan, thank you so much for all your years of, of service. Like The amount of times you've helped me personally out with stuff. Uh, I mean, I, I don't show you the gratitude. I should, uh, and it's not just me. When I said that you were coming on, everyone sort of said, "Oh, I met Garrett here. He helped me with this. He he did that for me." You know, and and that's it's 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 quite strange to have someone who's so universally liked at the club, Garrett. And well, I think from fans, we just like to say thank you. That's really kind of you. Uh, I'm taking back. Thank you very much. Uh, there's one offence many people know, Fuzzy. Uh, Keith Jones who goes to the games uh, and he's got a little saying it's nice to be nice uh, and uh, that stands I think across the uh, football club as well uh, and if you can help people out why don't you help people out so many people like this football club love this football club uh, and uh, they help me out as well so I, I just try and help people back in the same respect Nice one Gary nice one right let's let's go through sort of your early life as a fan how did you get hooked on Wrexham am I right in thinking that you lived across across the road uh, I do now. <laughs> I didn't okay. at the time. I lived across the border at the time, up on the Wirral. Family Welsh, um, but they moved when I was uh, yeah, when I was born actually to the Wirral and um, to for work. And uh, it was the railway line. I think that got me involved because they could get down from uh, from Heswell on the Wirral down to Wrexham on the train from Birkenhead train. Uh, I got several friends in Neston. Let's go watch a football match, and uh, we came to Wrexham against. Um, Plymouth Argyle, 19 September 74. Uh, I was 14. We won 5 1. They went up that year. We beat them 3 0 as well away on the match today. And uh, Mickey Joey were playing. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, just to stand in the stadium, watch a game, I was in all the place, reading my programme, getting to know people. This, this is proper football. I see you watch it on the television. 
in those days you, you devour everything you can as a kid, don't you? You read shoot magazines, or you don't have the internet or YouTube or anything then, but you you, you have it it's on black and white TV. In fact, thinking about it, um, <laughs> when I started, yeah, but you still knew the colours, you know, and the teams, what they wore, uh, and that that got me into it. Uh, and I was just talked, and I'd be coming over. Since several of my friends used to come with me. Um, a few of them dropped off. They they live in different parts of the world now. Uh, but I'm still here, and yeah, I moved down to Wrexham, and uh, I've got so many friends here, and uh, this is where my life is now. Um, right, do you know what happened on April the 24th, 1990? <laughs> April 24th, <laughs> go on, go on. It was when Geraint Parry became mascot of Wrexham. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, right, can you see this? It's my 30th birthday, wasn't this? It's yeah, your 30th birthday, yeah. and when Garan yeah. Parry, programme editor, opens the box of programmes, he finds an unusual mascot at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> so they, uh, they set me off, obviously, yeah. It wasn't exactly airbrushed in, but it was. Uh, yeah, I put my little head on the on the face from the little podgy mask. <laughs> the I've got, I've got a few sorry. questions about this. A few questions. Yeah. Firstly, the hair. Hey, the, is the that, of, oh yeah. Is that, is that a perm or is that pure <laughs> Harry? No, that is all real curly hair. Used to go to barbers and the women would always say, "Oh, I wish we had hair like you. Wouldn't have to cost me a fortune get it permed." Yeah, and I just wanted straight hair. <laughs> Andy, Andy, put put that put that up to the camera again because there's a bit of glare on it. Try and get as close as you can. All right, mate. Going. So, to, to, bit more, can bit more. Oh, Mark's can story. Oh my god! Yeah, there it is. <laughs> um, for people listening on the pod, uh, it, it's not a great visual, uh, visual, <laughs> visual Grigel. experience. But pop on the YouTube and you can see that it, it's not the only one actually. Uh, but but that's what a good one to start. Um, yeah, uh, do you want to know who set you up for that, Geraint? <laughs> I've, I've just... Wait a minute, my internet is terrible at this place, so I'm sorry I didn't quite catch you there. Uh, do you want to know who set you up for that, Geraint? Oh, that would that was the that would be Dave Roberts and uh, Phil Jones. Yeah, the program with the time. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And the lads at the Prince's Engraving in Manchester, Engraving Services. They were good lads, Man City fans. But they ever came to a game, but they, but they knew all the players. They put so much effort into the programme. Because I think they could see what we did. And the rest of the team, there were so many other people who helped us on the programme. And that was a good programme over the years. It wasn't just the three of us. It, it, it was another 30 people. And, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was our way of helping the club. No internet again, I say. So the club could connect with the fans directly and put across their say on, on a certain aspect. Uh, and so we just wanted to project a good, uh, a good image of the club, and I hope we did that for many years. So, obviously, you were you were program editor for years. Now, take us back to when the sort of, like the first sort of thing about the, the full time job might might uh, came about. Was, am I right in thinking it was two thousand and two? And was it sort of a website or? That was right. Yeah, website. NTL were getting involved with the football league, and I think they put a hundred thousand into each club. Uh, Liverpool's West Brom Press in particular were, were very proactive in what they did. I don't think Wrexham did a deal. So eventually um, those sort of clubs like Wrexham got forced along to say, right, come on, my NTL. It's happening. So that's why I got the call from Liverpool and said, do you want to get involved? I was a British Aerospace there, yeah, or Airbus, and uh, they're working on the wings. And uh, yeah, so I took a chance. They, they let me leave very kindly, said, if it doesn't work out, you can come back, which is a bit of a you know, comfort blanket for you. And yeah, I got involved um, full time, and uh, yeah, not look back. So, so um, you have to remind me who who was uh, in charge at the time. Was that Price and David Rhodes at that time? That's correct. Yeah, that was correct. It was those two. That's right. So, I mean, you've uh, worked with so many sort of chief execs and, and owners. Let's, let's sort of take take them one by one. What what were Price and David like to work with? Yeah, they, they were fine with me. It was it was no problem because this obviously was before all the. Pro- sort of kicked in, if you like. I mean, there was always problems at the club. We'd had to save our soccer, hadn't we, in the 80s. And so there was always an issue with cash coming in, and cash coming, too much of it going out. So um, there was always a... But no, there was no problem with me. So they were fine. I mean, Price, you know, big support, uh, you know, for many, many years, helped to build the car, I think, didn't he, when he was a youngster? Famously, famously. Yeah. Um, another thing around about that time was uh, a guy who's gone down in our folklore, um, Rockin' Robin. 
can you tell me a little bit more about the absolute crazy well uh it's a family podcast uh but the the crazy fellow who is in that in that suit where did, did you find him or, or was he already sort of about the club he, he was uh, yeah the commercial manager at the time and I don't know which one. He was actually, I'm sure he was a student at the college next door. Name was Paul from Coventry. Uh, for, I'm sorry, I forget his surname. Um, but yes, it, it's, it, it was because his character shone through the suit, didn't it? The, 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 the war, the, the Rockley Robin now. And, and that's exactly what, what you wanted. It was a personality. Uh, yes, we can all have this incident on his push bike when he rode in front of the, what was the, the Mold Road stand, which you just used at the. Uh, and I think it, was a, it wasn't a very good game. York City, if I remember rightly. And he just appeared from the stewards. He must have picked a steward's push bike up and rode around onto the cop. Uh, and I don't think he was at all impressed because the crowd just all were shouting for Rocky Robin rather than the footballers. And um, yeah, he, he, was, uh, he, he was great. He really did. Uh, um, he brought it to the Rocky Robin outfit uh, and, and with that, the whole mascot theme. And it, and it mushroomed out there. We uh, probably went a bit too far with it in the end. <laughs> Robin's son and uh, oh dear, and he got married, I think, didn't he, at one stage? Yeah, so, um, but yeah, that, that was Paul Coventry. Uh, he did appear, you know, he came past, called in, so that was really nice to see him. Um, but now, for this one, the uh, only life, but yeah, Rocky and Robin, good heavens. I think, um, Carl, hasn't it? I think he, um, who were doing the media a few years ago, uh, he's got the outfit, they, um, they. It was found above the uh, the classroom, the community classroom. It was just yeah, yeah. there, there, wasn't it? Uh, and uh, him and his wife um, revived it and got it uh, got it back up and running. Got it was good. To, you couldn't do too much with it. It was still an old old item. But yeah, uh, the, the, the Rocky Robins, of course. Then they changed the mascot's name, didn't they? So they changed the mascot so to the dragons. Yeah. Uh, back yeah. then, Garen, can we try something? Just because your internet's breaking up a little bit, yeah. maybe if you turned your camera off, we might get a bit of a clearer. Yeah. yeah. Just because it's breaking up a little bit, mate. That's all. All, all it is. Okay. Okay. Let, let, let's try it like that. So after Rocky and Robin, um, I want to ask you. Uh, let's ask. Let's let's sort of explore the sort of name change. Can you remember who did that? Was it a guy called Christian Smith who who did the? Uh, you changed this from the Robins. Changed it across to the Dragons. That's correct. Yeah, he was indeed. He wasn't there very long, was he? No, the, no. Uh, the, uh, what did you sort of think of that at the time? Did you think it was a bit of a gimmick, or did you think it could work? I mean, I have to admit, I'm of the opinion that mascots come through to it and to the supporters, um, trying to impose one on at times. Uh, it, it's, it's not really what you want to do at times, but it, it was fine. I mean, the Dragons. I think that the idea was the Robins, there was two, you know, Swindon, Bristol City. It was quite a name. Uh, and they were looking for something a little bit more unique. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. that's fine. I'm sure the kids, the youngsters probably don't even remember the Robins. So, uh, yeah, we moved. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I like I like a mascot or a nickname to uh, to come for a reason rather than, uh, you know, and quite often the fans or the players or Joey Jones is one of the best ones that come around. Oh. Gave everybody a nickname when he first arrived, and you got a nickname off Joey, and then he stuck. And uh, yeah, yeah, so um, but yeah. Just before I sort of let the other lads come in, um, what one, one of the when when did you sort of take over the the sort of dealing with transfers? Because I know you sort of came in with with doing the internet, but it seemed to be rather quickly that you seemed to be in charge of everything. How did how did that sort of come about? Uh, it, going into administration, probably was part of it. Um, that uh, the administrator phoned us up not long after he took over. And I thought, oh, this is going to be it. I think Halifax and Motherwell had gone into administration, really, and they'd laid off virtual war. Um, so uh, I got this phone call, and he said, you've got two choices, a layoff or Mary. So, oh, go on, then. I'll take, you, I'll take the second choice. We'll give it a go. And, uh, and, that's, and that's what we did. Um, so I, I was on the ground. Um, he had staff as well, being well, two administrators who would come in during the winter time. But I, on the ground here, running it for them. And uh, but it, it, it's um, yeah, just throw it into it. it there's no handbook. <laughs> yeah, you thought there'd be somewhere to, you could go things, but uh, no. Other clubs were brilliant. Uh, Tranmere Rovers secretary at the time, McCourt, and now, but more 
particular was was very very helpful. But any club, everybody helps each other. Uh, while teams have rivalries off the pitch, we all have the same problems, uh, and that's why uh, that's why you just help each other. So less helpful than others. That we always that, that's life, isn't it? But um, majority of secretaries help each other bend over backwards, and of course the league itself was very helpful. So you start fumble your way through it initially. Uh, and uh, start to get in the uh, in the in the role, uh, and um, even things like the, in those days, actually, you have to post the team sheet um, into the football league. So they had the first Saturday we were playing Swindon, and uh, nobody told me this, so it hadn't turned up at the football league. So we had a phone call. So I'm like, okay, right, okay, in, in the post first class, we get over that one. So then you get into routine. You, you note down what you're supposed to do. Have the returns in those days. You have to give three percent back to the football league of the of your income, um, and uh, there's a commission if you're going. And each club did that. So yeah, it, you you find you find your feet pretty quickly onto uh, uh, contracts. I have to admit, I don't negotiate contracts. That we've been a right mess of it, did. <laughs> but uh, but no. But, uh, I hope you can hear me all right. Something might be struggling to get through. Yeah, no, we we can hear you, Gary, but you can put your camera back on. It's it's still a bit sketchy. So either either chuck your laptop at a wall or restart it, or just turn your camera <laughs> back. It doesn't matter. We'll 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 get through it somehow, somewhere. But you you might as well stick your camera back on so all of our the adoring YouTube public can see your face. So you, might, <laughs> you might as well stick it back on. I reckon first and foremost. Um, but yeah, apologies for for anybody listening, watching. Um, you know, that's technology, isn't it? It's just the way it works, unfortunately. So, yeah, it's, it's like NTL internet. You mentioned NTL. Is that the level of internet you've got? Is that what's going on? You, you got like an NTL bungle uh, in your laptop. Is that what's causing the, the buffering here or what? <laughs> so, anyway, where were we up to? Right. I think um, let, let's let's dig deep into the, um, it's probably the part of, of, the club's recent history where things started to unfold and you know things didn't feel great behind the scenes you know, ultimately it would lead inevitably at some point to administration with the mismanagement and stuff but what was there any specific point that you can dial back to whilst you were there where you thought something's not quite right there's something because you will have known you will have sensed who is good at who is good for the club and who isn't at what point did, did you genuinely think something is not quite right behind the scenes here? Um, to be honest, it was uh, it was Pete Jones, Lindsay. Uh, we, I think we were down at Wickham and uh, they came over and had a chat with us, started um, suggesting some things that they found out. I wasn't aware of it at all. And it was interesting listening to them. And then one to sort of uh, give, us, give us a heads up on things. Uh, I could start looking around and, and seeing some, uh, behind the scenes, but yes, it, it was um, it was only really strange. Um, we, we didn't know, obviously, but Mark got him to come in, and so he he was on site, but we didn't know that he was, if you like, the front man for it. And, um, then Marlene, who was the uh, the lady who did the laundry and washed the kit yeah. at the time, she she came to him on the Monday morning and said, "There's a strange guy who's been here yesterday." Um, also we found out later and um, so that he said she came around on the Sunday and one pointing people's faces out on a, a team photograph and saying oh he's costing me X thousand pounds a week or was you know uh, and uh, and she, she didn't know what to make of him so that was sort of, it sort of snowballs a little bit after that and then it becomes public pretty quickly that, that things are not going well and the club's been sold and uh, you know uh, and yes, um, we just you just don't don't really know you you you're behind the scenes you work there, but you don't get the information that's all done away from from the ground. They have board meetings at local hotels and things like this. So uh, it, it was uh, it was a strange. Um, I was getting a lot, obviously a lot of information back from uh, from supporters, and uh, so they were keeping us up to date. Uh, and but uh, they were taking far more out than I. Uh, I don't think uh, MI5 has got anything on those lads. No, no. I mean, did, but how was how was your conversation, stroke relationship with with Mister uh, Gusselman? Did I mean we all know how we found him, um, mm. and you, as 
as professional as you can be because you're employed, you've got a job, you, you don't want to cross that boundary in between getting the balance right between fan and employee. So was that a difficult balance to strike? And and how did how was your um, sort of interactions with him? Well, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, John Reams also appeared on the scene, didn't he, around about that time yeah. um, as, a, as the chief executive to, um, well, he, he's a John, to be fair, he was, and he had his own, own ways, um, sadly passed away with cancer. Um, but he, he was brought in almost to close the place down, I think. And uh, then he, what he'd been told wasn't right. Um, and he set up that BBC interview, didn't he? Uh, that they did in their dressing rooms, uh, and to, to to tell this to tell this uh, his story, if you like, and uh, there was an article in the program that they made us rip out, um, cause cause did did more harm, if you like, to to the then owners because people had a program, but the page ripped out. Wow. <laughs> did you, did, 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 you, you, and, 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 did you and the program team have to rip out every page? Yeah, in yeah, yeah. We sat there doing it, and we said, look, look let's because people are going to buy this program and it's going to be obvious something's gone on here um, and you know so and as you say yes you're an employee so your first reaction is, is as best you can it's also to the manager and the players trying to keep things as sensible um, as you can and, on, and steady on a level footing for them so they can go and play football um on a saturday afternoon obviously in hindsight what it's developed to at the time we were or really what was going on uh but yeah so um it, it was so many little bizarre things that, that happened around the place we had, we had to drive over um they made us to lincoln to pick up the car the club car from john reams's house uh, and bring that back you know so so yes you do things as long as they're not there's nothing actually directly doing the club down if you like from what we were doing yeah uh, uh, so we we're just today kind of keep it running Trying yeah. to get the players, trying to get the coach, trying to make sure that the, the electricity was the weekend, and uh, somebody banging on the door, wanting to get payment. Um, and every, everybody did their role, I thought, pretty well to help out on that side of it and make life as, as normal players and the staff as we could. Uh, and uh, stay greater minds and hours were behind the scenes to uh, try and resolve matters. But it, it, it was horrible, horrible yeah. time. And uh, just quite happy to move on from me to be honest yeah yeah i mean obviously we, we put a message out on twitter before about saying that we had you as a guest and, and, and asked them to to give us some questions they'd like to put to you so we'll intersperse some of this with some of their questions and, and the first one um is, is paul um from twitter i can't remember what it was because andy's put it in the chat he didn't give me the surnames <laughs> um how did you keep your cool working with a certain alexander Hamilton, because I mean, we all, it's very well documented that um, not, not the nicest of, of people. Um, we know what the, what the intentions were and what the motivations were. Um, how on earth did you um, A, keep your cool and B, just not storm out and go about enough? <laughs> you, your privacy is always the football club, isn't it? And um, over the years, um, loads of, uh, of people come and go. So you were hoping that something fairly short term. Um, we still had um, people like the two days were on the board, weren't they, as well? So there were still people to speak to and to talk to and, uh, and help each other through this. Um, yeah, Alex Hamilton didn't have a massive uh, dealing um, in itself. He wasn't here on a day-to-day -day basis or anything like that. Uh, his uh, secretary, was the name I've forgotten now, the lady, um, so she... Who would um, who would be more contact with you on a day to day basis? But then when he turned up on that day and went on on a match day, yeah, yeah, uh, and a lot of people didn't recognise him at the time. A few on, and then we end up obviously having to escort him off the cop, uh, and and basically the the officer banning him from his own club on a match day, you know, for safety reasons. Uh, and it, it's it, it was just you're standing there watching the cross, going, what the heck is going on? It, if it wasn't a circus already, you know, it's, yeah. it's rapidly becoming one, isn't it? And um, yeah, uh, and that, that was, but it, it was his temper in the end that cost him that um, that board meeting with the, with the two days involved. He was trying to get his secretary as a, a director on the board, 
and um, and it, it, the two Daves obviously weren't playing ball with him. And um, and he stormed out the meeting and, and resigned, wrote it on one of those uh, Coca-Cola Football League pad. And they came down from this board meeting upstairs and said, well, he's resigned. I mean, he can obviously get himself back on the, the protocol is, was it 28 days or something, call the next, he called the next meeting as a shareholder and the majority shareholder back on. So they had that period of time. And, and what do we do with it? Uh, and, and, and so they, they obviously contacted uh, some very high legal people suggestions and um and then they went to the administrators who alex hamilton was trying to and um and spoke to them and um and through to their good offices and uh, with the administrators that's where they put the club into administration there was no other alternative at the time nowhere to go and uh and that's what they did uh, and it ultimately that's that saved the football club it took an awful lot of work still another 18 odd months uh, and the battles in high court, battles with the Football League as well. Um, and so it just continued all the time. There was a number of times when fans came to me and said, Saturday will be the game. Uh, happily, it wasn't. But I understand the emotions where people were, were worried. Um, and, and you saw the, was it the Gateshead game where the banner was paraded around the pitch. Yeah. Heavy defeat on the pitch, but it didn't really matter, did it? That was, that, that was a, a byproduct actually happening off the pitch and the fans raising the ante all the time and uh and trying to bring it to the you know the attention of a wider public of what was going on here uh, things like the other you know, brighton fans absolutely fantastic what they did to support the club as well you know problems that they'd had and gone through and the sympathy we engendered there so we, we were a club that really got ourselves in trouble directly to our own um complete overspending we any football club we spend more than we bring in so there was always an issue there that's why we sold it in the first place to him but it was it wasn't a, you know something that couldn't have been salvaged the situation uh, but then we have somebody who comes in and really does if he'd be doing this to uh, in Rochdale or something where nobody cared he would probably be down the golf club and his mates pat him on the back with two million pounds on studying that and did he do something in Flint uh, sorry mold in the bus station as well and, and you get away with this, uh, and that's how you know property dealers, you know, that's money, isn't it? Speculate and, and move on. Um, but um, he get personal here with us, uh, and didn't realise that the f- people care about our club, and they particularly care about our football club, and um, the reaction he got um, instead of really backing away and standing up and making his money and running, he, he, he just. It out, didn't it? And, um, in the end, it cost him. I mean, is, is that fair Fair to say that? Is, was that the, the situation that made you the most stressed in your time there? Because that was another question Kevin on Twitter said. What's the most stressed situation you've, you've experienced at the club? Is it that? Or is, it, is there any specific moment that you were literally tearing your hair out and going, I literally, I'm not really sure how I'm going to get my head around this? So what, what was the one where you thought, right, I need to chain smoke? I need seven pints. I need to get the hell out of here. But what was that? What was that? There, there must be something. Uh, yes, when when you've got the local power company on your doorstep, uh, to to cut you off, and you've got a match coming up, uh, that 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 that's stressful. Buddy, you know, you 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 want people to be able to carry on with their normal lives, and then suddenly, suddenly, you know, because we owe money left, right, and centre, and it, and it wasn't getting paid off. So yes, things like that were stressful. It's administration. Um, then and in hindsight was the best thing that happened for the club. Um, we got people there, to be fair to administrators who cared about the football club. They obviously yeah, had yeah. their duty and, you know, to, to the, the people who owed money, absolutely. But they, they came in and, and tried to best for everybody involved. Uh, you know, If you could have administrators running football clubs on a daily basis, a lot, a lot of clubs would be a, a lot better off. Um, and But they... But they with them now, you've been contact, you've been getting a few off Dave, uh, sending a few text messages recently, thinking about how the times have changed from well, when we were down at the Millennium uh, and the money that came the LDV final uh, to help our cause as well, uh, and to how things have moved on now. He, he's getting as much pleasure out of seeing uh, the club as it is now, as, it, as we're working so hard behind the scenes to save us and take us to the High Court and win two battles there. Um, but yeah, I think the most stressful thing was get was going out the football league. Yeah. Um, Boston and saving ourselves, 
the following year when we actually because after you've gone through all, all you've right. got through everything off off the pitch you can now concentrate on the football and then that's it and, and you, you find yourself dropping out of the football league and you're thinking oh, well, after everything I've done and, and, and now we're in non-league football obviously at the time you, you hope that it's going to be a short stay uh, out the league you can bounce back we beat was it Stevens the first game of the season the following year they get promoted and we, we're still we were still outside the football league 50 and uh, yeah that, that, that's that's the worst case scenario because you that's what we're all about we, we all we want to see us playing at the highest level we can um for France that's probably what is now league one um if we can now with our new owners push on our later I'm sure but uh, you know that that gives us ambition to, to maybe push higher the late 70s I remember that it was fantastic you know um unfortunately it disappeared too quickly didn't it yeah, yeah. through the leagues uh, and only just managed to stay in the football league then um due to other teams um dropping out or the, the knocking uh, relegation probably is so it, it was uh, yeah actually waking up after and not being a football league club, that was something that really, really hurt. On a on a on a, a lighter note, well, I'm I'm going to assume it's a lighter <laughs> note. Tell us otherwise. Um, all the players that we've spoke to on this pod um, uh, of a certain era uh, have got many a story to tell about Dean Saunders. So, um, a have you got a good story about Dean Saunders? And B, how did you find Dean Saunders? Because um, I would imagine Dean Saunders speaks about Dean Saunders in a third person perspective. Um, <laughs> until he comes on this pod to tell us otherwise, um, we're just going to take that that general tone. But how, how did you how did you find him? He seemed a bit wacky. Yeah, I, I know exactly why people say that. I mean, he comes across so well. You can see why he's a good actor. Why he's a good um, you know on, on talk sports. Why why he's all, why he's on there quite often. Comes across really well, doesn't he? And he can tell a great story about his. About his he's got so many stories. He, I know, he can. After training up in uh, when we were down at College Park in those days, he old court. Tell story after story. Um, but he, he, Dean is, um, without doubt, football fanatic. Um, he will. He, he's supposed to get. I remember he used his wife. Is he still there at the training ground? We're supposed to be going to a meal or something this evening. And yeah, he's he's down at College. The under 12s or the under 16s or whatever, you know, he just he was going home, got out of his car, saw them, goes over and helps. And that side of it, he, he just a workaholic with football, just loves football. And to probably to the detriment of everything else, that was the problem. Um, and it, you have to keep him on a straight and narrow about the certain things. Um, but yeah, because he was just totally focused on. Um, I, I think it worked really well when Terry Darracott was with him. I think that was, uh, you know, somebody who uh, offered a, a, an experienced shoulder to help him out at certain times. I think that worked really well. It's a shame Terry had to leave us through injury. And, uh, yeah, he had his knees just <laughs> could hardly get up the stairs at College Park, the poor gentleman. Uh, so, so he went back to scouting. But it, it, he was he was great. So they really worked well. And uh, that was fantastic. But, yeah, one, one of my favourite stories of Dean, no, everywhere. The rest of the world's, you know, closed down. Certainly, the UK is can't do anything. Um, but this wants to train, wants to train. So he, he gets um, Charlie, who was the groundsman, still is the groundsman, to drive over to Salford to pick up these big industrial things that you get in factories, great big things, propane bottles, uh, and brings them back to the race car. And they've actually had them outside on the artificial pitch, trying to uh, thaw out or get rid. Know as best they could, so they could it's just at least a smallish area, so they get the players out training, uh, sticking snow into the minibus that we had to ferry it off the pitch. Uh, and uh, yeah, he, he just he, he, but he but that's what he was, he just he, he, would, he would sit there and he would talk to the same player 10 times, explaining a situation for a corner he wanted, and particularly this week against you know Forest Green, and this is what we want you to do. And um, and then he'd see afterwards, he'd come. I told him, I told him 10 times, what happens? First corner, he goes off somewhere else and they score. <laughs> and so his, his, um, his, his attention to detail was absolutely amazing. And uh, you can see why he rose to that as a player 
and uh, and what he did as a coach as well. Um, he, he left, didn't want to leave us, I don't think, but the offer to go to, to Doncaster was probably too good. Several, and uh, he took that and uh, and he did well for them. So um, it, it was. Uh, I, to be honest, I don't think him staying with the trust would be a marriage made in heaven. Uh, I think that was uh, that was always going to be a head-on collision somewhere down. So for him to take the opportunity to move to a, a you know to another club was was probably best for him as well. Um, but yeah, Dean, what what a character to come. It had something like that as well. Wow, you know, played at the top level, hero in Wales. Yeah. But you you mentioned you mentioned the trust there. I mean, obviously we we all know um, how important it was for the the running and the survival of the club at the time and 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 the purpose it served for that you know decade. Um, from your point of view, did you think things at the club in general got tougher um, or easier when it became fan down? What what was it, what were the most obvious changes that that you saw, and, and, and do you feel it was it was a just a generally you know tougher uh, thing for the club to sort of get through when it was fan owned? What what changed in that respect? Yes, that's exactly it. It's fan zone, so the responsibility um, wasn't just to um, or, or Jeff Moss, if you like it, as the as the chairman there. So um, decision. Um, then would have to go to the board, and uh, the board could answer you quickly sometimes, and not. Whereas, you know, if you went to Jeff Moss and, and ask, you know, can we go overnight to his hotel? You can go there, and then I'm not saying the trust wouldn't let you go to the hotel, don't get me wrong, but it was, um, it, you could get phone somebody up and just get an answer much quicker, whether that's right or wrong, but that, that was easier for the actual day to day working in the club. But then you, you work with the trust, and, and absolutely no trouble at all, they're fine. Um, they're finding their feet as well. It's something completely new to them. Uh, you've got the football board and the trust board. So the football board trying their best to, to run the club uh, efficiently as they can. And, and the money's, you know, Jeff Moss was fine spending money, um, but you know, for the trust obviously are spending the supporters' money then, aren't they, directly? And they have responsibility to that as well. And not to get us in any more, any more financial trouble than before. Um, and we work well, so you, you change of attitude, that's fine. Um, I got on well with the trust board and uh, I thought it worked well. Um, it, it's different, of course, it, it's in, it's 4,000 people, um, and sometimes it's 4,000 different ideas pulling in different directions, maybe, um, and then trying to move along in one particular way. Um, so, so it's just different, it, it wasn't worse or, or better, it, it was just different, and um. But this, everybody on the trust is there for one reason, for the football club uh, and supporters. Uh, yes, everybody's got, including myself, we've all got different ideas how you can do things. Uh, they're here to, for, the, for, the get, get, for the goal, isn't it, on the pitch of getting the team successful and successful. Um, and it, it's a shame that uh, it, we didn't have success. Come close a couple of times. Um, uh, anything sport, isn't it? You do come close, the close is just not quite good enough in the end. Uh, but I, I've got off the, the time and effort that so many people in the trust, uh, the trust board, board, the football board, and general supporters, people who came in and ha- offered their you know, time and effort to help out, uh, doing different things, whether they're a plumber, a painter, anything like that, to help the club along, it's along the road. Uh, everybody can make a contribution, and so many people did. Yeah, so, yeah, I certainly won't forget it. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll pass on to Liam in a minute for a couple of questions. Um, I just some, something that's popped into my head. I mean, the trust um, saw and experienced probably more than your average supporters' trust would have seen and oversaw. And one of those moments was um, was before that Newport game in the FA Cup. All of a sudden, Sam Ricketts is placed on oh. gardening leave. Yeah, Graham Barrows thrust into the spotlight. Um, I mean, how do you find that entire situation? Because obviously, you, you as far as we as fans see, you kind of like the uh, kind of like you know, you do everything as far as we're, we're, you're like the coordinator of stuff. You're like the heartbeat of the club. And one minute the manager is there, next minute he's not. What, who 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 told you the message that 
that he wasn't going to be there and, and the reasons why, because of obviously the approach from Shrewsbury and that he'd intimated he was going to go. Yeah, and that came through, yes. Uh, I can't remember, it was the day, the day before or the actual day of the, the morning of the game. Um, but yes, uh, I think it was Spencer, uh, Mark Williams and, and Gavin Jones, probably. I'm trying to exactly remember who, but it, it would have been those sort of gentlemen that they've been t- talked to. And, and you t- that, that's the situation. Football is a weird sport. Well, not a weird business. Um, so well, things do, every time, surprise you. Then you think to yourself, I'm not surprised, actually, because that happen all the time. So, um, so right, so that's explained to us. So he's not going to be there. Graham's going to be in charge. So you then you switch, right, Graham Barrow. What can I do to help Graham along the route? I'm obviously, an experienced gentleman in himself. You know, well in football, being a manager. Uh, he wanted to be manager back at that stage. He was happy being a coach at the limelight. Uh, it was thing that he particularly wanted to do. I think initially he might have said that to, to Spencer that he was, he, he thought that he would, but I think very quickly, I think we were, were we up a file afterwards? I remember sitting in a, in a hotel, I'm sure it was filed, um, just having a chat with him and it, it obvious that it, it wasn't something that um, that he wanted to, to do any for any length of time. Happy marathon in short term, no problem at all, but um, being the actual manager of the club was, was something that in his younger days, he was very happy with. Nowadays, he really enjoyed the coaching side of stuff, uh, supporting the manager at the time. So you you help him as much as you can. Uh, I, I can't I have someone who to pick the centre forward or centre half, but I can at least guide him through the day to do it as the manager, um, where he has to be, when we have to have the team sheets in, when he has to go meet the referee, uh, what time we have to be at the ground, where should we go for a pre-match meal, anything like that. Mundane stuff, isn't it? Um, but maybe take that away from him so he can concentrate a little bit more on the things, which you know is it, it can be more than enough uh, in itself. And uh, yeah, it, it, that was a, a, a strange one, without a shadow of a doubt. But many surreal days that we've had for the football club over the years. Uh, just another one to add to the book. Does ever write this book? Yeah, that that um, surreal comment probably brings us on to to my next question, which is. Where were you when you found out about the the, the the takeover bid? And when did you find out? Did you find out same time as everyone else? Or basically, yes. Um, I, I think obviously the trust board and members would uh, the trust you know board knew in. Uh, there was a sort of uh, we got a little bit of a hint that we had just to say um, that yes, something was happening, uh, which was going to help the football club. Yeah, but you're in you're in COVID. Your fans aren't allowed in. There's money not going. Is it? We've already decided they're not going to play and finish the season. You think yourself, well, that was other clubs do this. Um, thought that the streaming was was bringing a bit of cash in, um, but this wasn't a way to go forward. Our football club survived. You don't know what where that light at the end of the tunnel finally is going to take you in COVID. It's a very uncertain time. Um, I, I think I, <laughs> I think there's a few fans. The um, uh, Canadian millionaire was uh, was offered up several times. You'll probably find that in the you go back in the Red Passion posts. Um, for, he appeared a couple of times on the scene. So yourself, ah, oh, everything we've gone through with all uh, with the administrator and all different people trying to buy it. Um, you know, is is this another one of those little stories that might come go nowhere? Don't want to raise you. No names were mentioned, um, and uh, so it, we we then just found out. At the same time as the members did the actual identity of to be fair i thought they did very well at keeping it quiet um football clubs are like sibs everything leaks out doesn't it but they did pretty well and uh and these two gentlemen um suddenly you're like good grief uh ryan reynolds i've heard i've heard of him ryan reynolds um i, I did have to google broad rob <laughs> but then suddenly realized god this, this guy is you know very big in america uh and that's He's actually very well known over here. Um, there's a cult following for his series, and uh, on Sky Sports, I'm afraid that it passes me by half the time. But yeah, a lot of people really knew them. This was okay. So the next thing is, where do we go from that? Obviously, they, they had a meeting, like meetings for for the supporters come across very well. They did the same thing for the staff here. So we all club, and they were on the screen looking across. Uh, they spotted one of the guys at the time was wearing a green lantern. T- which I don't think is uh, Ryan's favourite movie he's ever made, by the sounds of it. And uh, yeah, so, but they come across, and you think after everything you've gone through, you've got two, these two 
from the other side of the Atlantic who have nothing to gain out of this, do they? There's no, we turn down the stadium. We're not going to sell a player for ten million pounds. Uh, we're you know we're wandering along uh, very you know fortunate that we hadn't actually got relegated ourselves down to the conference um, in the run up to COVID. And I think somebody who actually wants to here. They have there can be another alternative motive that they, they're not going to build a BQ, they don't know that. Um, so they've got a lot to lose, they've got their reputations, um, you know, and, and they're so well known and well liked for the professions they follow. And uh, suddenly thinking, could, could, it, could it really be happening? Uh, and the, then it's going through, Kerr comes across uh, and he's on site. Um, so Sean Harvey appears. And well, this is starting to get some legs now, isn't it? The bubble, the bubble we're definitely rolling here. Uh, and but this is this is going to happen now. It took a while for the financial side of things to get through, get approved, really, by the, the authorities in this country. Uh, we were away at um, uh, old the FC United's ground. And uh, so while the game's going on, I'm sitting in the stand with the laptop and I'm sign some documents that we have to do online uh, and send back, digitally sign them. So we're doing going on. Oh, hang on, just scored. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> and then uh, and then we'll back to the computer again and to get another form signed, signed and sealed and sent across. Um and then and um you know and you're thinking oh, this is amazing. Where can they take us? You just you've got people in charge. And that's and supporters done the same thing with that 90 whatever 98 percent vote in favour for them. It just showed how well the gut they, they presented themselves. Because for the supporters to back them in such numbers after all gone through, because uh, there's got to be you know uh, some some fact that oh is this what is there some ulterior motive to it? Um, are they just you know they really can't? Yes, could, could they with a, a TV series? Could they lift their profiles? Yes, they could. Do they really need to lift their profiles any further? They are the massive as it is, and uh, so. They really want to help us, uh, and they want to leave a, a legacy whenever, whenever they leave. Hopefully, that's years and years and decades down the line. Um, but you know, the area uh, the Welsh government's taken to, and the Welsh Election Council now giving them, you know, freedom of the town, and uh, and they're, they're genuinely just nice people. Everything we've gone through to have somebody like that, you know, who's at the top, it, it, it's refreshing. And, and it's reflected around the town, isn't it? You, everywhere you go, you see us now to see all this 7,000 plus. We could probably sell another 7,000 if we had this capacity. People to get tickets to come and watch us. That's locally, nationally, and then internationally. I still can't get my head around. Uh, and that's just absolutely amazing. Um, but but, but it, as football fans, that's the most important thing is what happens at three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. And, um, and now to see. Rob and Ryan joining us here as part of the and thoroughly enjoying what they're watching and becoming getting under their skin uh, and um, as much a support as anybody else is. It's fantastic to see. Have you had um, much interaction with them with them yourself? Uh, no, not really. They um, they come in, they have a chat. And they're over here. Um, they, they do make the, they do make a point of coming through and saying people. Uh, but quite often it's a flying visit, isn't it? Certainly in Ryan's case, he's, he's in the morning, gone in. Um, and the celebrity around them means that they have to have security people with them. And when they first arrived, that was uh, quite surreal, wasn't it? They uh, again and using that word uh, with NBC, NBC satellite trucks are sat in the car park. Um, but now we've got over that side of things, so that you, if you like, dropped off. But they're back to the people now. Uh, yes, obviously they're very well known and people. Autographs and so on. but they they uh, it's great to see them get to know our players' names, to get the team's names, you know, and become involved in that and getting along, you know, in Rob's case, getting along match as well. Uh, and then to see 9,000 people turn up here to watch a women's game against Connors Key, um, it, it just shows how much the club again means to another part of the community, not that we were used to watching the men play. Um, and it's spreading and spreading, and it was. All the families there with the young girls who have now got their heroes to look up to in, in the women's team, and uh, what and that, that legacy that they talked about is it, starting to happen, isn't it? Um, what they're doing around the area, uh, and um, I, 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 I 
I keep saying it, but I wake up in the morning thinking sometimes, is this is this real? Is, is, did we just get with? Did we just have two Hollywood A-listers at the top of us, you know, guiding us along and help to where we want to get? Um, and uh, it did feel one day you're going to wake up and that nah, it was a dream. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we're still stuck playing down there, heading off down to somewhere on the south coast. I'll have to get a map out to find out where I'm going. Um, but now it's. Uh, uh, but, I'm sorry if I just repeated myself, and I'm I'd probably just saying what a lot of fans are saying the same thing. Um, some it's too good to be true. It turns out it is. In this instance, they, they've kept their word, and yeah, it, it's been brilliant. How much has um, your role changed? Because we've seen quite a lot of you know staff coming in that perhaps we didn't have before, understandably under trust ownership, you know, because we couldn't afford to be paying stuff left right and center but there's quite a lot of um you know new faces now so how's your role changed um in no, that regard yeah i mean i'm, I'm still i concentrate i think now on, on sort of a core business if you like although the emails just still flood in now uh, we've got people like john widdison with the community side so and kerry what she does uh, she's helped with the as well as, as this, helping all sorts of um disabled supporters side but I mean, she's, her role was always wider than that as well, uh, and the inclusion side of getting everybody in as she can. Uh, so John's now helping out as well because he's he's not community, the, the commercial department, uh, are just people throw money at us now. This is, I'm sure the previous managers would love this situation and they're just fighting people. Like, no, we haven't got any more boxes, but uh, what about reason? We've only got seven or eight, you know, whichever we have for sale, and they've all gone. Must have places, you know, and all the hospitality's gone, and it, the sold out signs are up, and people just don't believe us. A chef United fans I, I just really could not understand that an on league club had no space in a 10,000 capacity stadium. They honestly thought, I don't know what they thought at times, that they, they just be the ball sponsor, I'll be, I'll, you know, I'll be the kit sponsor for the day, you know, just want to get into the game. And um, we try to say, no, this is gone for the season. Uh, and uh, people already jumped, you know, and as soon as the draw was made, the phone's ringing and I'll, I'll do this that, and the other. And uh, so that's uh, obviously with uh, Sean now uh, and Fleur working together, uh, Fleur Robinson on that side of it. So that they, they, have phone, they have phone numbers for people. I could only dream of having phone numbers. On. So uh, when they ring the FA, they don't, like I, I ring the gentleman in registration or something, I'm lucky to get a chat with him. Um, uh, but they, they go to, you know, very high up. And <laughs> so again, to have two people like that, who, who again fighting our corner week in is 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 taking it to a yet another level, but this is where we want to be, isn't it? To be progressing, this is the first step, uh, and probably the hardest step. I think everybody agree the national league is a tough league, let alone just one promotion, automatic promotion. But the actual quality of football in our is is just risen and risen and risen. Uh, what we see in this season between. County takes it to another scale, I, I, I will admit, but on a, on a yearly basis, it's still a very, very good league. Um, once you get up now, and then you start, you're in back in the Football League, you get an, uh, an email off the, the chief executive of the Football League, welcome us back. So that really made it. Well, they, they do want us. <laughs> Obviously, it's not confirmed until they rubber stamp it at the AGM, but um, to get the ball rolling, and they started asking for meetings now. So we've got the uh, broad coming down in a couple of weeks' time to have a look around. Uh, so they sent us that many for us. We're going to be all summer filling them in. Um, and that, So now it's real now from that point of view. We know we only finished playing in the National League yesterday. Um, so, yeah, so I've got loads of that information. There's another lady, Julie, who's a PA to, uh, to, to Fleur, and she's worth her weight in gold. Oh, she deals with everything and anything across the board. She deals with the police, with concerts, um, you know, road closures, uh, getting flowers for the manager's wife when you get promoted, <laughs> things like that. So she's she's fantastic. So we share an office uh, and we help each other out as much as we can. And uh, so I mean, so that side of it is, has grown. We've now got an accounts department. It's got three people in at the moment. Um, Board you in there trying to work out the players' wages and and, and all the staff wages as well. Uh, on a monthly basis, so every month he comes round and he, he has to battle away with that. Um, plus, everything is required because going in back in the football league, they want a lot of information as well about your finances. Um, they've obviously been bitten by a few clubs, maybe that have come up in the past and they've not been quite as many. I don't know whatever they put forward wasn't quite what what turned out to be. 
So, uh, so they're very keen now to check everything and go through everything with a fine tune comb, um, which is great. Uh, what else have we got? Other oh, the sports um, used to be the football uh, licensing authority that looked after the ground. So when you come out of the football league, that that disappears, and it's your local council. Now our local council sticks to the green guide, uh, which is for the safety of football grounds. Um, clubs coming up the divisions. So when we go to some grounds in this league, people will notice the difference uh, because that local council don't have that same uh, requirement. So, but now we're going back in. So what is it? The sports ground safety authority. Let's change the names. So they were they invite. They had the first review of us for the game against uh, Boreham Wood, and uh, so we get back on with them. So we'll have quarterly meetings with them to check, as well as our safety advisory group. So that's the boring stuff away from it. But you, you've got to do this this day and age to make sure everything is as safe as it can be for supporters coming to grounds. Uh, we, just, we we don't want any more Hillsboroughs, uh, those horrible situations that have gone on in the past. People want to come here and, uh, and be safe and enjoy it. And that's with the family side of things. You, you now have the, the safe standing, hopefully, in the new stand. Um, that's something to look forward to. Uh, so we'll, we'll hopefully we'll get the, the the atmosphere that people on the terraces always used to bring to the games, and uh, and people can can stand at matches. Um, and then, but you've got the other areas where the families can bring this bring the kids, and they can feel safe. The quiet zone that Kerry does on the far side in, in the Macron stand. I mean, that's been such a massive success. The families who write to us and contact us because say now they can bring their youngsters and Paul Mullins now championing that cause as well with his own family. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so have things changed? Yes, dramatically things have changed. Um, I've still, we still got to get players across borders when we sign all our English-based players. So we work closely with the Welsh FA on that. Uh, and, and they're always very good to us. That there's um, Obviously, we've seen this season that in the National League, that we've had slightly different rules, obviously being a Welsh club as against the English side of it, because they, they're signing players from their own country and it's a much bigger pool. Uh, we can't actually sign anybody from Wales. We can't even take somebody from Cardiff or Swansea uh, because the Welsh uh, follow other UEFA rules and it's all closed down. Uh, so once the window's closed, that's, that's it at the top levels, uh, for several levels down. Whereas in England, it goes down to um, bottom of the Football League, National League, you can still sign players from other National League teams or bring players out of the Football League. Um, so the, 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 to be fair to Sean, he went on to FIFA and they gave us a dispensation, which allowed us to bring players in when we were buying players. We never actually tested it for a loan player coming in, but... Uh, uh, that, that possibility was there, you know, we needed it. But Ben Foster's came in as a, an outer contract player. But then you got Owen uh, O'Connell, uh, Andy Cannon before Christmas, uh, Ryan Barnett as well. So FIFA allowed us to circumnavigate their rules uh, with the windows closed, um, just on one year, just for one year. So it would have to be renewed next year if they were going to do it again if we were still in the National League. But now we move up into the Football League. They have their own internal rules which don't allow for transfers. Um, certainly into clubs, so we will be on the same. We will be on the same playing field anyway for that. So, uh, so we won't need it next year. But uh, it's um, it's trying to understand the rules and regulations, which are constantly changing. And uh, I'm trying to help the manager along the route as well when he's, he's looking to buy players and bring them in, and what he can do and what he can't do. And it's so frustrating as I'm sitting here, I want desperately to sign somebody, and then I'm telling a manager that no, we can't do that. Why do you mean I could do this when we were at Lincoln or when we were at Barnsley or something? And yeah, I know you could because you're yeah, trying to explain. But that, that's that's the um, it's not a downside. That's the difference of being a Welsh club playing in a foreign foreign league, if you like, uh, in footballing terms. And um, so I, can't, I speak to Cardiff or Swansea, and they have exactly the same problems with their coaching staff at all levels. Whether it's the youth coach trying to bring somebody in from a, in a lad from a team in Bristol or something, you know, the local side there, and they said, "No, you can't do that. You can't do this." And uh, but then we try and work with each with the with the Welsh FA and English FA because to find some if there if there was a way that we can do something uh, and uh, so yeah we had it the other day the reserve game they they text me a photograph of the uh, the team sheet I was at Bolton with the player and uh, they got three trialists we can't have trialists so yeah we can have trialists they're from Wales like Scott Butler was a trialist in the reserves that's fine because he came for Swansea. But if, if we can't bring anybody from England in, but they're not taking anybody across the border. So it's the frustrating side of, uh, of it. But that, that, the downsides are quite small. Being able to play in the Football League is what we're all about, isn't it? And we want to get back there and just can't wait till August to kick off again. Yeah, I don't envy you having to negotiate those, um, those rules at all there. Did you give Ben Foster a warm welcome on his, uh, on his return? 
Oh, it was lovely to see him back, wasn't it? I, I remember a very shy young goalkeeper back in the year when we played at the Millennium Stadium. And uh, was it Hereford was one of his first games, I think, wasn't it? In the, tro- in the, uh, the LDV, as it was then. Uh, and oh, yeah, he was sort of came in quite young, didn't know anybody. Uh, and then suddenly, when Foster, 2023, walked around the corner, he's your best mate. I haven't seen him for 17 or 18 years or whatever it was. There he is, just larger than life character. And, uh, you know, it, the, the change in the careers he's had on the back of um, coming for a few games with us, like, you know, all those years ago. Is absolutely fantastic, and so Alex Ferguson coming to watch his son Darren playing, and then picking up on on uh, on Ben because he was there. But yeah, he's it, 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 just the same as he is on his on his videos. He's no difference. It was lovely watching it. Even yesterday, um, I know that we didn't have the, the edge to the game yesterday, but as he as he came in, he was doing the signing autographs. There were so many people wanted to see him outside from the Torquay area, uh, and uh, he, he found a bit of time for everybody. And uh, that was lovely. And uh, what he's done this season with us, uh, you know, it's, it is stuff for legends, isn't it? I don't think anybody will ever forget that penalty save. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, amongst everything else. But he was the boost we needed. Poor old Rob goes and gets himself injured again, doesn't he? Three times at Bromley. You just, you, you, the bookies just wouldn't even I'll give you odds on that, would they? Uh, and, and, you know, for him to then drop out. So you needed that extra goalkeeper, the senior goalkeeper. You've got four days then till the registration deadline closes. Um, what can we do? And uh, I'm still not sure who actually had Ben's telephone number in, it, in their book, but I'm sure it was uh, Aidan or, or similar. And uh, yeah, do you fancy coming to help us out? Um, seeing him back here. Uh, so he just gave, gave us that little lift at the right time, didn't he? Uh, well, we're all sorry to see Rob not being involved. Uh, and Mark's taking it so well, hasn't he? And uh, it's, it's team spirit, isn't it? Somebody's come in and be part of the team straight away. Have you uh, put any uh, forms in front of his face at all, Geraint, in the uh, in the in the recent? Uh... <laughs> Make him sign it, Geraint. Sign here, sign here, Ben. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's just an autograph for Mrs. Jones from Rose of Tuttle. No, no. Oh, there you go. Five-year contract. No. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, the cold light of day, I'm sure, where people say things in emotion and, and excitement, and you can see after everything he's done, so you can see the enjoyment on his face replicated everybody else in the stadium after the one game. He was just the same as everybody else. He could have just taken the back seat and said, oh, that's fantastic, you know, delighted for everybody. I've only been here a couple of weeks. But he was he was there amongst the players. Um, he won, I think they gave him in the in the uh, centenary uh, Bamford's, didn't they? They gave him their man the match in his first game. Obviously, just to get him up there, I think, <laughs> than anything to come up. But as we were just walking up the stairs, I just took him up there. And he, he just, he turned to me and he was just saying that, just have, we had, you know, like 30 seconds together as we just make our way up there. And he said, this is a proper team. This, everybody's fighting for each other. He said, you know, I've come in. I've only been here a couple of days, but this is a proper team. Uh, and uh, that was that was great to see somebody, if, in, an outsider as such, but somebody coming from, you know, what we hope we're doing and, and we're projecting to the world. And we've been a great team all season, but somebody who's come into it, been a part of it, and quickly realised that there's something special going on here. And, uh, and that was brilliant. That was brilliant. And I say he, he, what he's done for us uh, has been amazing. Yeah, he's quite the um, media personality. Um, speaking of which, how have you found being in front of the cameras yourself? Have you demanded hair and makeup and everything? <laughs> yeah, my age is doing a rubbish job. I've still yet to see any <laughs> any fees. Um, it, it, it's great that the cameras are here. Uh, was it the other night we had three of them lined up along the side of the pitch doing their uh, presenting their, their TV shows? So, so, well, Wales ITV, BBC Wales, uh, and S4C. So, all doing their news programmes from the side of the pitch live on link ups. So, what so not to get each other's views or sort of pretend they weren't alongside each other. Um, so, having that sort of interest back in the club is just uh, uh, it's great locally. I mean, don't get me wrong, but the coverage we're getting worldwide is un- unbelievable. New York Times turned up the other day, uh, and you know you look on there, and they've got 50 million followers on their Twitter. Uh, they, they put one thing out about us, and how many people are reading about us. Um, and I was seeing that from people sending me links from Hungarian magazines, Australian sports, just everywhere around the world. You've seen the same things yourself. Uh, and Brazil seems to be, and Argentina seems to be taking us to their hearts at the moment. And the show must be going out there. And uh, but yeah, it, it's um, it's nice that people want to speak to me about positive stuff. I mean, 
that they, they go to the manager and, and, the, and those people. So they're just going around trying to find somebody different. I think by the end of the day, the end of the week, they just need a different face. So, but yeah, happy to, happy to chat about something that's really positive for the, for the football club, for the town, for the whole area, North Wales. And it, it, it was great. I mean, when the final whistle went against Bournemouth um, and, and we were up and it was, everybody was going nuts on the pitch. Uh, and I'm, I, it was a sense of relief for me rather than you know, screaming your head off. It was just like after all this time, all these people have worked so hard. So many people aren't with us at the moment, unfortunately. Um, so we remember them as well. Uh, and, you know, hopefully they're looking down. Um, yeah, I, 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 I can confirm your sense of relief because Craig Colville, who does the uh, does a lot of pictures, he was there for that Boreworld game. And he's, he's, he's put a, uh, a photo on Twitter. And he said he, he wants to know what was going through Garrett's head at this point. So I don't know if you can see it. Um, <laughs> that, 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 uh, uh, absolutely perplexed. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. It, I mean, was, it, that, was that was that just the same as all of us? Just an outpouring. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, we're, we're the hardcore fans, if you like, and and, and we're delighted to everybody because people say these are the new newbie fans, and they are really, are they? They're still Wrexham fans. They might only come to um, four or five games a season before, or fifteen games, but now everybody's coming to all the games. So that's why the crowds have gone up. Uh, so everybody's there. But guys, uh, you know, Tim, you, you, you can reel off loads as well. Andy can uh, and Liam can. We've all got loads of friends who, who come week in and week out. And they're down at Torquay years ago when, you know, when we were rubbish and getting hammered. We had to get into Torquay one year uh, when they banned away fans, didn't they? They would lose 5-0. Uh, and you think, was he worth it? But these guys uh, and, and girls uh, who, who devoted so much of their, their time, their life, towards the football club and uh, it, it's a small thing isn't it getting back in the football league in the greater scheme of things but to us it means so much uh, and um, that's why that, that relief was there um, we, we you know we've finally done it for everybody's sake and after so much effort time and, and uh, so people spend so much money you, you go back to that, that time when we had to raise that money for the um, uh, for the, the National League wasn't it to, to the bond wasn't it to, to make sure we could start that season literally over the weekend and what are we going to do and how is this going to happen and um, and to see to see and it's the same now the kids coming along you see the little kids with smiles on their faces because they got a, a selfie you know with Jake Bickerstaff or something like that uh, and, and it, it doesn't have to be the star player does it it can be anybody in a election shirt and they're just they're just made up to be there and that's what you want that excitement back in people's lives back coming to the football because uh, it's something we felt as kids and uh, and to see it reigniting again I, I felt so sorry I mean I've seen 77 8 so I know what we can be like and I've, I've seen us take on the best clubs you know in Europe and beat some of them as well uh, so I'm so fortunate on that code score. But they're just, I look at a cr- uh, group of youngsters now, who probably, I say youngsters, you could be up to the age of 30 maybe, and you haven't seen that success. You've had the odd promotion or the odd fleeting um, in the late the early 2000s or 1900s. But you, what we saw and what we saw, 20,000 people turning up the ground, uh, you know, and, and, and playing Roma and Zaragoza's uh, and beating Porto's, uh, beating Arsenal. Uh, and, and to see what the club can achieve, um, uh, and these people are supporting this without having, they, they know the history of the club, but they've never had to experience that. So for them to experience a season like we've just had, 111 points, 20, 22 wins out of 23, and more, but still disappointed about that one draw. <laughs> that's, that's how our standards have gone up now, isn't it? Uh, and and, and that's, that's brilliant. And uh, yeah, uh, we, we, you know, it, we, I'm not saying we're better at any other football club, far from it. We're just another football club in the football league, but to our community, it means so much, doesn't it? And uh, and, and that's great to see see those fans with the smiles on their faces at the end of that game. And I, and I think that's what that was all about. It was suddenly it was like, good grief, you know, after all these hopes and you know, near misses, but suddenly we've we we finally achieved it. You know, you can't quite believe it, can you? And then to get that email say off the football league, welcoming us on board, that was uh, that was what it clinched it for me. Andy, you're on mute, mate. <laughs> no, sorry. I thought Tim Tim had, had another question. Um, yeah, yeah, Geraint, um, what's the most bizarre request you've had from a player, public or media in the last sort of, well, I was going to say in the last in the last couple of years, but to be honest, it could be for the last, in the last 20 years. 
uh, uh, sorry, bizarre um, request. Bizarre request from, from, I don't know, a player, the public, some media, just, just someone who's, they've given you something you think, oh, well, I don't know if I can sort that out. But it, <laughs> if it's from me, that's, yeah. that's not, that's not, that's not use it. Did like, did like Hector Sam have some sort of bizarre dietary requirement? You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, good heavens on the spot. I can't, I can't think of stuff. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll go round it if so can navigate it at the moment and say the stuff that comes through for, particularly for Ryan on the emails at the moment, uh, we started printing them off. I mean, I'm never going to make these public, you know, or name individuals, but some of the stuff that people come in and, and expect um, the owners to be able to achieve it, it, it's just unreal. Um, we now have a script of the day. Is we are getting that many film scripts sent to us. Um, Julie's got them there, and, and it's paper. It's paper ones. It's not. It's not just you know email <laughs> ones. They're sending a full script, and Julie's got oh, today's script. Yeah, here's today's script, uh, and you know, and it's like, why do you send a script to a football club? They're obviously <laughs> trying to get through, aren't they? To 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 particularly Ryan. Uh, and uh, and they copy everything in. You can see the the, the other places they're sending it to for Mint Marketing, uh, Mint Mobile, and Aviation Gin, and, and all the other places he has uh, dealings with. Uh, and just on a hopes, you know, it's their ambitions, isn't it? It's like I, I get loads of emails from footballers all over, particularly through Africa, saying, "Please sign me, sign me." You know, and, and, and even if you're the next Pelly, we couldn't. If you haven't got a British passport, you, you know, or an Irish one, you're not going to get into the country to, to be even registered. So that's a shame. But you just get those all the time. But yes, the, these emails, Ryan, and please, thirty thousand pounds. This will get you, a, you know, part of my, my next great project of whatever I, I you know. And you, you read some of them, and it's just like, wow. Why would you even take the time to write this stuff in? Yet yeah, other stuff is really nice. There's people in Ontario or something they're trying to raise money for their local ice hockey team and can he help them out um but I, we we don't have direct connections with the owners um i think people find that hard to believe for obvious reasons because it got out this was where we sent the emails to but they, they you know god heavens goodness if you see the amount of stuff that comes to us goodness what they get direct sent to his agents or, or his pr company or whatever in america um, but yeah, there's some strange and scary people out there as well, which is, you understand why they got bodyguards. We just get spammed by people at the moment who, who just, they're, they're coming through every every couple of minutes, an email, uh, and um, but they're specific to, to Rob and Ryan. It's not like a, some, I mean, they might have some robot who's doing it in the background, but it, you know, it's, it's not just spamming the world. These are stuff that's coming specifically for them or about them. Uh, and you think just enough for the truth. Um, there are some people who, you know, uh, fantasy and reality sort of cross over uh, and they don't understand that, that, that these are just human beings. Um, but yeah, so that's a, that's the crazy side of it at the moment. Just see, you see my email account and I look it up, but it was like 207. Um, obviously, yesterday and today, I've not been too close to email. I've got 276 emails out there now to be looked at. And it's just, yes, you can go through a lot and, and delete them quickly. But I, I don't like to delete them. If people write to us, um, I'd like to give them at least an answer of some sort. And uh, and if we if we can help a few of them out, there's, there's plenty of people that, you know, it's so sad some of the some of the ones who write in. They've got some real problems, uh, you know, personal part in their personal lives. And can somebody help them? If Ryan could send them, a, can they send a photograph or, you know, Designed a signed a video for their dad's birthday. You know, he, unfortunately, he's on his last legs or something in hospital. Can we send them a video where I'm wishing them well? Uh, you know, if, if he did that every day, he'd just be doing them all day. You know, literally would be. Um, and Paul Mullen, come to that. But, uh, but so where we can, and we, we will try our best to help out. We have to remind people that we're still a football club at the end of the day. We've been trying to get promoted. I know we're over the line now. Still a lot of work to be done now, ready for next season. And uh, it just really all starts. And uh, the next thing you know, somebody's telling you you're going to play Man United in, in San Diego and Chelsea in North Carolina. And there's probably another two to come, are there? And uh, yeah. And if we have football league clubs inviting us to go and play pre season friendlies at their place. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about League Two clubs, I'm talking about these championship ones. And uh, that, that's just incredible um, how the world has uh, spun around at the moment for us. And, uh, I, lo I, lo I love yeah. the fact that that a guy who is renowned for being nice, if we go back to the very start of this pod, you've had to develop a thick skin to say thanks but no thanks to all these uh, scripts as Rob and Ryan's official showrunner, as it now <laughs> Um I mean, 
is it i mean even you as a fan you must like take a step back and go i've got to pinch myself through all of this um and there has to be you have to manage these expectations somehow of of the fans um has that been difficult for you and the other staff there to kind of get your head around the magnitude of the stuff and, and the enormity of some of these things coming in and then trying to figure out well okay that you know, maybe we can do something that but for the most part you have to be cruel to be kind and, and knock most of it back is that kind of difficult for you as a naturally nice person uh, that, that's it for all of us here you know uh, Kerry the work she does the community and for John himself uh, Gemma working in, in the community office there our in the past we're desperate to get people involved with the football club um, and wanted as many people as possible to, to be involved in, and to be able to send autographs um, around the world to different people. You know, can I, oh God, I've got a lovely story about a lady who was uh, Mark Howard. She's Mark Howard's biggest fan. She lives in Sheffield. Uh, or a mother is, sorry, it's a mother. So we, we got a pair of Mark's gloves signed and sent across to her, you know, and, and things like you can pick the genuine ones out rather than uh, um, I live in Kent and I've been a Wrexham fan all my life. Please send me your autographs, you know. Uh, and as much as you, you you don't mind trying to help people out because you can never the, the way it is these days you can't um but yes it, it moves on and, and there's some really s sad tales that come to us of, and can we help them out uh, and we will do our best you know what paul does with his charities here um for, for the autism families um you know the trouble that the, the problems that jordan davis and, and his partner faced uh, in their past personal lives and you know so People have been really good uh, and they come along to us and donating um, uh, money to, to pass on. Uh, and when the lads win a uh, man the match for the um, National League, they get a check of it's 200 pounds. So it, it gets funneled down to one of those two charities. Um, National League passed the money across for, from that. So small things, hopefully small things mean a lot to people. And uh, so if we can help uh, a Cubs scout group here, we certainly will because we know that um, Kerry's... Oh, Never, never has the turnstile collections been more popular. They're always popular in the past, but we could we used to have about enough to, to sort of see us through the season. Now I think she's probably about five or six seasons down the line with people asking. But um, so, so you try and help out as many people as you can. Um, but yeah, but we have you're quite right, what you say. We have to remember, we're still a football club, we have to get the football work done as well. We have to turn out on a Saturday afternoon, there's no excuse. They say, well, oh, sorry, I didn't book the place hotel because we were too busy, you know, trying to help raise some money. Uh, whatever you know whichever charity we can help out uh and everybody comes to you and thinks they're the only pe people that have requested anything um and, uh, and and again when you go back and you explain you can't quite often they're very good about it there's one or two that think oh, but i'm doing this for charity and you're like yeah so so we're th you know three or four hundred more but if we don't get 10 10 20 requests a day in for some sort of charity um, work on our behalf. It, it's been a quiet day. So, as you say, you, you, you're developing a, a little bit of a thick skin, um, but, you, but you're conscious as well that to, to the people who are raising money for their charities, it, it's a big thing in their lives and, and they're helping out because something's gone, you know, whether it could be a family relative or, or, or something like that, it, it's been affected. So, it, it's important to them why they're trying to raise money. But yes. There are sometimes when you get people in Sweden or something, right? Can you raise money for their local charities? You think, well, we have to keep a little bit more closer to home as best we can. And there was a, an animal charity in South Wales who, who said, could Rob next time, or Ryan, was it next time he's there, could they come down on their helicopter and visit them? Uh, you know, and it would be, be great for their local charity, which it would be, I'm sure. Um, but you try to explain what. Well, yeah. Have they named some of the animals after Rob and Ryan? Because that's um, a fair deal. And that'll be something like that, and you know, you get those. Uh, one of the local hospitals here is asking them to come along because they, they'd like um, to open a wing for the hospital. Things like that. The, Brit the British Council asked us, could uh, could Ryan deliver um, the keynote speech? And uh, you know, and th th these are very you know very prestigious requests. To be fair, aren't they? Um, so I, I do pass them on. Poor old Humphrey it, it gets uh, gets a few of them heading his way on his email because I say I don't have direct contact. So so be. Have a look at this one. Do you think this is worth, you know, if you can pass this along and see if they can help? Um, but you see the amount of work that they do do. It, it's phenomenal anyway. Uh, I don't know how they time, find time to do it amongst all the Hollywood commitments and, uh, and production stuff. It's just amazing. But uh, but they, I say they're nice people, and if they can help out, I'm sure they will do.
do you miss the days of Mike Lake opening like a local co-op? Yeah, that, that would be it, wouldn't it? That would be yeah. the extent. I know, I know, I know. Yes, now they're asking us to send Robin Ryan to open up the local hairdressers or something that's just had a refurbish, um, yeah, whatever it might be. But yes, yeah, the local stuff. It's, uh, um, it, it's it, <laughs> yeah, Mike Lake. That's right. Um, Geraint, firstly, did you get my script? Because I yeah. sent it on email well, and a hard copy. I found out the ending. In my, uh, yes, what's the word? My literary now skills coming to the fore of judging what is a good film script and what isn't. I well, think my little robot, robot driving man. instructor, it's good. Uh, <laughs> get Ryan and Rob can, uh, Rob can direct. Um, sort of going on what, what you've been saying. Now, a lot of us sort of fans, sort of some of them feel that maybe the club at the moment isn't as friendly as it used to be that it used to be a community run club. You used to come in, you used to get an answer straight away. Um, maybe they're sort of thinking it's harder to, to get that at the moment. Do you think there is anything in that? Or do you think that's just a byproduct of how professional the club is trying to be now, plus however many other requests it gets? Yeah, I, I mean, I look at some of the stuff that gets just flashed around to us also gets copied into Manchester United and, and Liverpool so you can see all the, all the clubs that they're writing to and I, sometimes I think Man United won't quite often bounces back to us their replies that they send out I hate to think goodness God how many how many thousands of requests does a club of that size get so we, we, we're conscious here that we want to help out but it, it is just a tidal wave of requests everybody wants to sign shirt to sign ball um, you know, the lads would spend all day literally signing everything. We'd probably go bankrupt, selling, giving all these balls and selling shirts away. So you have to find some way that you can help out um, a specific number of charities, help out some of the individuals as best you can. Um, but it, it, it's, it's just literally a tidal wave of requests that come in. Um, and and that, that probably reflects then on uh, what you said there about supporters maybe not getting their answers as quick as they can sometimes. Um, I know there's lots of questions going to the ticketing office. Um, Pete, uh, it's still a small operation. Uh, Pete and Catherine are in there. And they're selling tickets for so many different events at the moment. And, and they're doing the season ticket renewals. They'll be on to moving on to uh, um, club memberships soon. Uh, you know, on top of selling tens of thousands of tickets per game uh, and for the away games. And it's just, it's, there's only so many hours in the day. That's the problem. And everybody wants an answer straight away. Um, so we try and work our way through these emails. We try our best to get back to people as best we can, as quick as we can. Uh, hopefully the, the ladies and gentlemen in the club shop, because they're usually the first point of contact uh, when people come into the ground. Um, they could help out and advise. They still get, they still get phone calls off, off the ladies there said, I just don't know what to do with this particular gentleman. You know, So we come across and try and help out. Um, but it, it, there are just so many requests, and uh, I, I feel I'm sorry when we can't give people a straight answer at times, or we'll get back to them as quick as we'd like to, and and some do get missed. Um, the guy on the PA system, he's he's got the stage now. He's just has to write to me on a Wednesday and just goes, I can't take any more. Well, Steve, he said, I've literally, I've timed it now. I, have, I can't do any more. <laughs> so, and they're still coming in. Oh, can you mention my granddad? It's his 80th birthday. And then somebody comes back and says, I didn't hear it. And I'm like, well, he's ready to out, poor fella. You know, he might have been down the toilet at the bar or something at the time, you know. But, yeah, so um, there's, there's small things that we can do, you know, to help people out. Um, but, yeah, the amount of requests for but videos, every, it's the way the world's changed, isn't it? So can you just send a, a video of, um, you know, Luke Young or somebody wishing my granddad his happy birthday? Uh, and it's amazing how many they do do. Um, but they obviously can't do them all. Uh, and, and the ones who, who miss out, unfortunately, I, I fully understand their disappointment. Yeah, no, I understand that. Right, Garrett, we've had you on for so long. You've talked so well. So let's, 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 let's start to wrap this up. We do a quick fire section um, and it's just five, five quick questions. All your time supporting watching Rex MFC, the, the first player that comes into your mind, who do you think was the most skillful? Uh, Bobby Shinton. Yeah. yeah, one of my heroes. You know, you, you go back to when you're a kid, don't you? I have so many players lately, but as a kid, I, you know, it was absolutely fantastic. And, Did you pop uh, your hair on him? With bandit, yeah. Oh, <laughs> he should never have put those curls in, should he? If he kept his hair straight, he would have been fine. When he, when he, put, the, oh, when he put the perm in, it all went wrong, didn't it? <laughs> right. On that note, who was the worst dressed? 
<laughs> That'll be me. I don't have any, any <laughs> oh, regulation, oh, regulation club coke, all right. You can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I wear it every, every day, whether it's summer, winter, or fall. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, the players themselves now, they've changed a lot, haven't they? So, um, so there's a few of them that didn't didn't care, really, they're not bothered, but most of them, like any young young man these days, they're, they're very fashion conscious, aren't they? And they all get stick of because they're wearing the right trainers in training or when they come into that, you know, all this, that, that all fills my head now. But, uh, but yeah, there's, um, <laughs> but there's, there's, I think there's a couple that couldn't care, you know, when they were more professional, Stuart. Uh, um, Stuart Bevan, when he was with us, he used to sleep in the car park, didn't he? He used to come here in the morning, he'd leave home because he had two young uh, two young twins, babies. Um, so he'd beat the traffic, he'd get to the ground about seven o'clock to beat the traffic, just get an hour in his car, and then walk into the club, and he'd go, oh, he's looking a bit disheveled. I did not know that. <laughs> but, he was, he, but he was a professional because he was there. He didn't want to be late. He wanted to be there. He wanted to do everything right. And uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, and he, I wish we'd had him a few years younger. And yeah. uh, what, what a nice guy as well. Who was the biggest moaner? <laughs> oh. I mean, you get you probably get the brunt end of a lot of moans. So <laughs> I, I know, I know there's, there's been a few that I, I shouldn't really answer that. That's, that's uh, that was unfair on them. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, the answer is Neil Ashton. Yeah. Neil, sorry. Neil Ashton is the answer by all accounts. Neil Ashton, <laughs> Neil Ashton was a man who wouldn't play on 3G, and now he's manager of a three. We played on the 3G pitch, wasn't it? Good old deal. Yeah. I had to ring, we had to ring his wife up and tell him he should run into a goalpost one day as well. Oh, so. <laughs> the only time I've had, yeah, he ran into a goalpost in training, not himself out. So we had to get an ambulance down. Oh, dear. We get, we get an emergency telephone number for all the players. After all the years, I've never, I don't think I've ever had to phone up and, to, and with any sort of sort of bad news. It might be the car's broken down or something like that. But that, that was to a, just, he's all right. Honestly, he's all right. He just doesn't know what day of the week it is. Because she's going to head butted a goalpost. Yeah, and trading. Poor fella. I happily, happily it didn't affect him a long time. Uh, um, uh, well, I don't know where we go from that. But who, <laughs> who do you think was the most underrated player who didn't really get the plaudits that they deserved? Oh God! I, I, I wish you give me these questions in advance. I would have sat down and come no, up. No, it's got to be. It's got to be straight. It's, 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 oh, whatever I, comes into your head. I know. I know. Oh, struggling, struggling. A um, few people, people have gone forward. Joe Clark, maybe, or you know, Clark, there's yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going, again, going back to my youngsters, young days. Um, Mel Mel Sutton. I, I thought Mel Sutton was a brilliant player. And he's one of those players, like you mentioned there, that when they're not in the team, that's when you miss them. You know, you, you don't appreciate them half the time when they're there and what they do for the players around them. So, again, for my era as a youngster, uh, somebody like Mel Sutton really should, you know, was a far, be a far better player than you ever got credit for. And finally, in this sort of section, which is the player you'd least like to fight? <laughs> um... There's a few big ones, aren't there? Billy Ashcroft, probably, in his prime. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're not the only one who's gone through yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's a big fan. But my hero, King Billy, he was my first hero as a kid as well. But uh, big fan. And I love it now when the players come back and they, they come up, to, you know, they're around the club, aren't they? We invite them back to be part of the days and they meet the fans and, and the sponsors and, and go with the social clubs. And some of the players come back and they go, nobody remember me, nobody remember me. And yet at the end of the day, when they've seen them off going home and they're like, fantastic day, I want to come back again. And, and that, that's football fans for you, isn't it? they do remember you. Uh, the players might not think they do, um, but the football fans do. And, and to see people like, uh, I mean, the kids have got their favourites today in Paul Mullen and so it's like, you know, you probably have a statue of him before too long. But, but for me, when I see Billy Ashcroft, they're the ones who are sort of like, I'm always in awe of them even this day and age, and uh, because they were the lads I grew up with. And uh, and that's what football's all about, isn't it? Enjoying it and having heroes. Last one from me. Um, uh, you just mentioned him there. What What is sort of Mullin like? Because I sort of I sort of see him as a great sort of talisman on and off the pitch for this club. You know, the, the, the big money signing who, who you know, is, is great, not only great on the pitch, but a great community person as well. You sort of mentioned his charity. I mean, where where does he sort of stand in in sort of greats for Wrexham, and what where could he sort of go as well if he stays here for a bit? 
Oh, I mean, we all hope he stays here. I mean, he seems to thoroughly enjoy it, but we're, we're all realistic and we know that plenty of players have said, uh, you know, and then, you know, the, the, there's an offer comes in from a bigger club and, uh, and and they move on. And and, and that's what, we, we appreciate that. We understand that as football fans. We don't, you know, we're disappointed when they leave at times. And I'm, please, I'm not saying Paul's going anywhere, far from it. But the truth, we had headline on it. But no, it's... Um, he's thoroughly enjoying it for the moment and that's all you can ask players to do you can't ask them to be supporters but you can ask for them on a Saturday afternoon to give that for that 90 minutes to give their all for the club and they go above and beyond it this group when you, I see them outside signing autographs when they're coming in and going out after a match uh, and I've never seen one of them um, rush past the kids they, they all stay there they take the time going through it uh, and Paul's very much in that mode and uh, it's the work he does as well um, and gets involved. I mean, he's, he's had a spotlight thrust on him as, as a striker. He, he hasn't particularly asked for it, does he? I mean, apart from scoring goals, you know, that, that comes with the territory at times. But, um, you know, he, now his celebrity has gone around the world. Um, but as he said, what is it? He's, one of his favourite things is sitting on his sofa with his kids. And, um, and that's lovely. And, and what he's done so with the, the local autism charities. And other charities, you know, and he, he rings us up after he's had the Man of the Match award and says, yeah, anyway, good, good Scouse accent, top Welshman, he's a Scouse accent. So I'm looking forward to seeing him play for Wales. I hope he gets a call, though, and this summer. That'd be lovely. Oh, yes. um, but, uh, whether that will happen, I don't know. But, you know, he's always said all along, hasn't he? He wants, he wants to be part of it. He, wants to, he, he, he feels the Welsh side of his, his family. And... Uh, yeah, and what he does, it's just what you said. He's just, he comes across as a nice person because he is a nice person. And uh, that's all we can ask for players. You've got, what's it, 30 odd players now? Oh, you know, we've got, in the first team squad, we're very fortunate to have such a large squad. And not everybody, there's all different personalities. So not everybody's going to be the shining light. Not everybody can be Ben Foster, the, the outgoing and bubbly character. So they, they all bring something different to the squad, don't they? Um, but you can see how much the other players, um, think of you know, people like Paul of, of Elliot Lee. Um, you could go and you can go through the list uh, and what they bring to the club, and uh, and that's what makes a team. And uh, I, I love it when I see Paul and Paul goes over the top and he chases. He always puts his hand up, doesn't he, and to acknowledge where the pass has come from. And uh, uh, you know, and that that's that's why the rest of the players certainly don't begrudge the, the attention he gets at the moment. And the longer may that continue. I mean, for him to score the goals that, that we all looked at when we used to look at Tommy Bamford and think, oh, nobody will ever do anything like that again. Uh, and we're very fortunate to have somebody who's, uh, who's certainly heading in that direction. Guy, yeah, um, it feels like forever ago, but it wasn't that long ago. I had the privilege of sitting alongside you in the press box for, for many matches, helping out with the, the Twitter and the match reports and all that. And so I've kind of experienced firsthand how much um, the football club means to you. I mean, this is like, I'm guessing this is like a dream job for you that keeps on giving you every day, despite the admin stuff and everything else. I mean, just just try try and put it into into so many words what what this means to you, not as an employee, but as a fan in terms of us getting back to the football league. Because there were there were plenty of points where you thought. We're just cursed. It's not going to happen. 98 points, it's not going to happen. Playoff failure after playoff failure, it's not going to happen. COVID, it's not going to happen. You just felt that the, the odds were stacked against us. And I, I feel like you are the kind of the, the best example out of all of us who encapsulates what it means to be a Wrexham fan and how, how much getting over the line this season means to all of us. I mean, can you kind of sum up, you know, if you, if you take everything else away from it, take away your desk and just focus on you and what it means to you. Is it, do you put it up there amongst all those big European nights and Porto? Cause I know that's one of your, your highlights. Is that up there for you? Oh yes. Yes, that's right. I mean, Porto and the Arsenal games and things like that, they were moments in time, weren't they? And massive, massive ones. Um, but this, has been going on now for uh, since previous Christmas, hasn't it? This run we're on. Could we could we maintain that run that we did came so close with Stockport? We could have started it a couple of weeks earlier. We might have caught them last season. Um, then the playoff, you know, goes against you as, as playoffs can, uh, and they always do for us. Um, but yeah, 
but then to be able to maintain that run into the following season and um, what, what the, the staff here have done and players is just uh, phenomenal. Um, you know, and to, to get that record, 111 points, um, win after win after win, going everywhere, blowing games back. We, we think of older shots, wouldn't it? When we, you know, we thought we'd blown some vital points there, um, but that's just one of many. Is it? Oh, you know, we've done this season that we've never given up, and uh, that's a good motto to, that the lads have. Just don't give up. Keep going. Keep going. Things good things come. Uh, and, but so this is a combination of, and it's not even just those 18 months or so. It's a combination of of the 15 years. That have gone into it and um, so many players have been in contact former players uh, and said such nice things about the club um, and I always include them as part of the basis of where we are now we couldn't have got to where we are now without their help so everybody has played a part you know Paul, uh, Paul Rutherford in particular was was in contact the other day and I know he's featured on the uh, on the documentary wasn't it one of the early ones after Dag, after dagging him away and, uh, and it, you know he still feels a lot for the club and, um, and for the people here uh, and for him to come along and, you know, Sean Pearson. And, and I go back much, much further than that as well. So many people have made contact with us. And I hope, I, as a supporter, you want the club to be, people who come here and play for us to, to keep us in their, in their hearts, uh, some fond memories of the place. Um, and, uh, and hopefully that's, that's what they, they take away with them when they move on. And uh, so to see it now, finally get over the line 15 years later. Good grief, as you say, can't finally believe it's true. And that, that's why it means so much, is because um, we're not trying to be uh, really big head about any of this. Um, as I said before, there's lots of good clubs in, in, in Notts County thoroughly deserve to be up with us. And I hope, I hope for their sake that they join us in League Two next season. Uh, they're, they're a great club off the field as well as on it. Uh, I've got so many good words to say about the people at Notts County. Um, so that they deserve some success as well, uh, but the, the, but that can go right down to Wheelstones. I've got some so many great friends now we've made through the national league, and I'm going to miss that side of it. Uh, I'm not saying we won't make more friends back in football league, but um, we've made a lot of good friends I think over the years uh, in the national league. But you know, where, where do we see ourselves? I say that's where we see ourselves, isn't it, as a football league club? And that's what our, our predecessors saw us from 1920 on one onwards. And um, to be able to do it for them, to get us back there. And then let's see where the adventure can take us. Can the, can the wave carry us up the divisions uh, and how far we can get? There's a lot of silly things being written in the, in the media. And I know people are just trying to get clicks on YouTubes and, and such like, you know, that action can never be a premiership side. And, and it, that, that time will tell whether anything like that ever happens. I'm sure Bournemouth fans a few years ago would never thought they would be up there as well. And Luton fans are on the verge of it now, aren't they? The playoffs. So th there's that possibility. I I'm not even entering it as a as a massively serious um, aim for us. My aim is is to get League Two and then League One. And once we get to League One, then um, you know things are going to get very difficult. Then uh, so it'll be hard enough in League Two. Uh, but in League One, it'll be uh, it'll be it'll be hard. But that's where we see ourselves to start with. Can we then build like we did in seventy seven eight and have a go for the championship? Um, and so yeah, I mean, I'll probably be long retired by that stage. But as a, you'll as a, never be retired. You'll be there. You'll <laughs> I'll still be, be watching. But uh, but uh, but that that's what we're here for, isn't it? And, and that's what sports so great. And that's what the pyramid system in this country. And that's why the Americans now who, who are coming across to us are finding so intriguing that they're used to major league sports there, where the the worst that happens for the team which is bottom is they get the first pick of the draft for the next year. Um, so they can't understand and uh, they're appreciating it now. Well, why can't we have uh, promotion relegation? What they call it, pro reg or something? And uh, and 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 then we've we've had it for this time. And it's you know, and your Dawkins, this world's a great example of them rising and rising up the leagues uh, to get where they are today uh, and seeing where they can go as in the next year or two as well. That'll be interesting. Some nice people there. Uh, and for, but for us, our ambition is for ourselves. And to, now we're the League Two club is to push on next series. I mean, we don't just want to sit in League Two. We're serious about making a proper run for, for promotion. Um, we, we, nothing's taken for granted and nothing is is ever available. Uh, I can't remember the years we used to go to Boreham Wood with 300 fans in the ground. But what they did was put out a team of 11 players against us 
that quite often were far better than the team we've putting out with three or four thousand fans. Uh, and so, you know, that's what it's all about. It's that Saturday afternoon, uh, what you do for that 90 minutes uh, in sport and where it takes you. If, if we all knew the outcome, the, book, the bookies wouldn't make much money, but, and, but it wouldn't be any fun either. Uh, and and you, so when things do go wrong, it makes the good times better. And uh, for the, all the bad times that any Wrexham fan has had to go through in the last 20 or something years, that, uh, that this, what we're seeing now, uh, I don't say it makes up for the horrible times that we've had in administration, but it, it's, uh, it goes a long way towards repairing the damage that, that we, we went through. And, uh, and, and it's, it's really nice that people are just, other clubs are just so pleased to see us back, genuinely. And uh, uh, I think the National League will be sorry to see us go, to be honest, after this. They'll, they'll be sorry to see us go. They'll be sorry to see you go. And I mean that in the truest sense. Um, before we let you go, I just want to say on behalf of everybody here, all the fans, there's, there's loads of messages about saying a pass on a thanks to Guy. He's a legend. And, you know, that that word does get used quite frivolously. Yeah. But I think in, in this regard, it is true because you have give up an insane amount of time for the club. Um, you're probably one of the last people to turn the lights off when you leave. And um, one of the first to arrive in the morning, you know, and that that's testament to you. And I think you know, there's not, there's probably not enough superlatives to, to chuck at you, you know, that, that we, you know, we, and all of them would be, would be, you know, well-meaning without doubt, hundred percent. We're, we're all massively, massively privileged to have you at the club. Um, long may it continue. So, yeah, a massive heartfelt thanks from us um, as fellow fans and peers and also from the fan base. So just want to extend our gratitude and thanks to you. That's very kind of you. And uh, But hey, we're here for the football club. As long as we get a win on a Saturday, that's all that matters. Who are we getting first game of the season? Who do you want? Be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. Fixtures out at uh, the end of June, I believe. So uh, we're looking for a home fixture if we can. Obviously, they're usually, they're usually given, don't they? We'll wait and see on that one. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, who would you like? I, I just, I'm just glad to see anybody. To be honest, any league team <laughs> comes that way, <laughs> and uh, to be actually playing and getting all the stuff that you know. I'm looking forward to transferring the players' contracts to league two, to football league contracts and non league and things like that. And uh, but yeah, it, it's 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 going to be brilliant, isn't it, to see football league um, emblems on our on our shirts when we run out there, uh, and and just being part of it. We wish the national league well. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed a lot of our time and effort in it. Um, there's some, a lot of good people, a lot of good football clubs, a lot of good, a lot of good teams playing some really good football down here. It, it used to be the abyss, didn't it, when you dropped out of it? You know, you're never going to return, but uh, it's far from it. And uh, I hope shortly that they'll get a third, a third promotion place. I'm just, I'm just hope we're not one of the ones that then goes down into the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> it's typical, isn't it? Yeah. Garen, thank you so much. We'll let you go. We're gonna we're gonna do a, a little bit of wrapping up here, and um, we don't want to keep you any further. But a massive thanks for for giving your time up. Um, it is hugely appreciated, and you're more than welcome to come back on any time you want in the future. Good night, everybody. Thanks so much, Garen. Cheers, Garen. Enjoying that, Garen. Thanks a lot, mate. Take care. Top man, top man. Um, where do we go from that? There was loads, loads of good stuff. I mean, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I mean, um, well, he is Mr. X, and we said it at the start. Um, I mean, one thing we're not going to do is predictions because there's no bloody game. Um, I predict we're going up to League Two. Some of that. And you're predicting in the dark, you're like my worst nightmare. This is the last thing I'm going to see before well, I die. This gives you an idea of how long we've been on. I started in daylight, and I'm leaving at twilight. So, um, right. Okay. Just before we do go, let's just say we've got a few features coming up. We are going to go through the mailbag. So keep sending us your emails. What's the address, Tim? Do you know it? Uh, it's fidzine at gmail.com. F I D Z I N E at gmail.com. Right. Now yeah. back on that mailing list so I can see all the emails. And in those emails are orders. Do you want to tell them about that, Andy? Uh, yes, but I think you might know more. Okay, so um, we are currently taking orders, pre-orders for issue six, the fearless and devotion of the actual fanzine, which will be available in hard copy format and digital download format as per usual and bundles. That will be out soon. We're not going to give a firm date yet because we're, we're, we're just tying up. Bloody written it. 
Yeah, just um, tidying up a few bits and bobs. But the front cover is um, a very, very nice work of art as taken by Jordan Birchall, who captured the moment of Mullin in front of his many disciples on the pitch when we when everybody stormed on the, the pitch at the end of the Bournemouth game last week to seal the title. Um, Jordan's kindly uh, sort of done a tie-up with us to do some prints of that, which are available in A3 and A4 format. Um, I can't remember the prices now, but they are very, very competitively priced. They are done in a very, very nice heavyweight uh, paper, which uh, our well, our colleague did say what the, the heavyweight paper was, but I can't remember. I'm going to hand, plus I'm talking in the dark. So I can assure you it's very good. I want to thank everybody who's pre-ordered the fanzine and print so far. Massively appreciated. Loads coming in from overseas as well. Um, there will probably be a limited run of these, so please act fast. Grab one. You can get your pre-orders for the prints and the zine at fearless.wales. Big part to all this is that I think it's 39 or 38%, however many goals Mullin ended up with, um, which Andy will tell me, um, will be a portion that the percentage of that will go towards his uh, charity, uh, which is uh, our space, if I remember rightly. Yes, the autism charity from Maxim. So um, the, there will be a proportion of, the, of those donations from the prints going to them. Um, which is a very, very worthy cause. So please check them out if right. you haven't yet done so. Right, Tim, I think you've scared the kids enough in, in the dark. Um, let's let's tie this up because it's been a tour de force. Now, we're sorry, we're sorry for, the, um, for the sound qualities at the beginning. Lots of good stuff that Garrett was saying. We don't want to lose any of it. So we're going to keep on, keep on doing that. And I think Tim's going to turn the light on. This is what I'm hoping. Uh, there we go. There we go. Mm-hmm. Let there be light. You see my slap right. for those watching on YouTube. Right. Okay. Uh, thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for being with us this season. It's been an absolute mental, massively great season, which we've all massively enjoyed. We are sticking about over the summer. There will be there will be episodes pretty regularly. We're going to aim for every week, but you might you might not have a week here or there as we we go off on holiday. But thanks for being with us. Thanks for this, and thanks for Geraint. Cheers. Bye-bye. Up the lead to town. Cheers.